Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is March the 11th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just give a warning out there, right? Like many of you, I like to bet early on fights. I want to get great odds before other gamblers wake up and the line adjusts. This Canelo, Billy Joe Saunders fight, is supposed to take place in early May. Now, I'm not 100% certain on the location, but what I want early bettors like me to consider is the idea that you'll place a bet, the casino will gladly take your money, right? They'll gladly take your money. But then the fight might be postponed, delayed, right? Your money might be tied up for more than you think a longer period of time. In Vegas right now, casinos like the Aria, the Bellagio, the MGM have closed their buffets, right? This fight, again, is supposed to take place in May. I believe the coronavirus is the kind of virus where Angela Merkel uh, estimates 70% of Germans will get it. I think most of us are going to get the coronavirus sooner or later. I think it's going to shake up a lot of people. Well, understand that uncertainty might linger into May, June, July. People might be shocked. I don't think people fully appreciate the fact that for younger people, right, the risk of a serious injury, being seriously harmed by the coronavirus, isn't that great. It's for the 60 and over crowd, where you're dealing with mortality rates of greater than 5%. So just understand, we'll be talking here as if the coronavirus doesn't exist. There is a good possibility that many of the fights that are currently scheduled to take place in the next three months get canceled outright or postponed to later dates. If you're going to bet and you're thinking, hey, this is money I actually need to buy face masks with, buy toilet paper with, buy hand sanitizer with, then you might want to keep that money in your pocket until we get more clarity on whether this fight is going to go forward. Understand, the last thing promoters want is to have a great fight take place and no one buy the tickets. No one show up because they're afraid of riding in planes, of sitting in crowded arenas, etc. Who wants to go to Vegas if you can't eat the buffets? <laughs> right? You know, just, just food for thought. There's a state of emergency right now in New York State. Right? I'm not sure if that's the best time to travel. Right? You go to meet your friends and then you find out they're quarantined. Right? You can't even hang out with people. Or worse yet, you're in the location, then they declare a quarantine. And you can't even get back home. So keep an eye on the timing of this fight. Right now it's set for close to Cinco de Mayo. Now I believe that Styles make fights, right? This is a diversified fighter who I'm expecting to be the hunter, fighting a master of the back foot, right? The bet I'm recommending is Billy Joe Saunders to win the fight at a plus 350. I believe the casino is making a huge mistake. Saunders is unbeaten. Saunders has fought, in my opinion, more emotionally racking fights than this in the past. <clears throat> Understand, he fought Chris Eubank. I believe they were both unbeaten at the time. That was a high-stress fight, right? Eubank comes in, tries to collapse the pocket, has a punch, is aggressive, Right? Saunders has already seen that. More importantly, he fought Andy Lee. And I'm just saying, 
You know, it's the guy in your neighborhood who you've grown up with, so to speak, come up in the ranks with, right? Or who came up in the ranks a little before you. So there's a little bit of little brother wants to take on big brother, right? That was a big fight with really a lot at stake. So I don't think Billy Joe Saunders is going to be intimidated in any way, shape, or form by the moment or by Saul Alvarez, right? He's not going to hop in the ring and look like he wants Canelo's autograph, which is what Rocky Fielding looked like, right? This is a guy who's been in tough fights. This unbeaten record is earned, right? So... If you're telling me that if these guys fought four and a half times, Canelo would win three and a half of the four times, and I'm just looking at the play from the Saunders side, understand, Canelo, as I make this video, is a minus 500. On the Canelo side, they're telling you that if they fought six times, Canelo would win five. I'm not buying it. So I like Billy Joe Saunders to win at a plus 350, but I'm going to hedge the play with the over now I haven't seen an over under on this fight because it's just been announced but my goal is going to be to get the last four rounds of the fight so let's say the over under is 10 rounds I'm just guessing right then I'm going to try to buy the ninth round right because by the time the fight gets to the last third of the fight I want to be fully protected. Let's talk about what I mean by buying the ninth round. Since I already have Billy Joe Saunders at a plus 350 for every second of this fight, all the way through a decision, right? That's how absurd the odds are. Then I can take the over. Let's say it's, you know, nine rounds. Better yet, let's say the over under is 10. If it's nine, then you're fine. But let's say it's a 10, right? Then I'll say, okay, let me go get Canelo to win by KO in the ninth round, right? You should get huge odds because when you're picking one round, they give you huge odds, right? Just to have a block of rounds at the end of the fight. But let me be clear here. I'm expecting this fight to be controversial, right? I believe there's a distinct possibility that Billy Joe Saunders wins the fight in the ring only to lose the fight on the scorecards. We'll discuss it. First, let's talk about the styles. You know, Manny Pacquiao Big puncher with a straight left hand, fast southpaw, right? Used to be a great puncher. Now his power is the kind where he knocks down Shane Mosley, who gets up and finishes the fight, right? Recently, he knocked down Keith Thurman, who got up and finished the fight. But understand, Pacquiao has that kind of power where he can knock you down in any round right early in fights both the Thurman knockdown and the Shane Mosley knockdown were early right you might recall he stops Timothy Bradley which is an accomplishment in their last fight right Pacquiao's power is sudden so here's Pacquiao and he's fighting a guy who he's already knocked down in a prior fight he's already officially beaten in multiple fights and Manny Pacquiao couldn't believe how good he had it. This guy was over by the ropes, for crying out loud. And here is Pacquiao with serious power. So Pacquiao, of course, goes over there. Pacquiao's the hunter. Right? Pacquiao is ready to throw a straight left hand. There's a knockout. Manny Pacquiao is knocked out cold by Juan Manuel Marquez, who, of course, is playing the role of hunted. 
but who, of course, had a right hand, a right counter set up for exactly that moment. And for those paying attention, they will know that that was the second time in that fight that Marquez dropped Manny Pacquiao. Right? In an earlier generation, you had Gene Fulmer, the hunter, fighting a guy he'd already beaten that year, Sugar Ray Robinson. Right? Fulmer can't believe his luck. Robinson's over by the ropes. Fulmer goes over there to rough up a guy he's already beaten. The next thing Fulmer remembers is being on the canvas. His manager somehow is in the ring. He sees Ray Robinson jumping up and down in his corner. He says to his manager, what happened? And the manager said, they counted to 10. Right? Let me name one more fight. Here online, it's a fight I actually did a pre-fight video on. It was knockout artist Arthur Abraham fighting knockout artist Carl Frotch. I told people here online, I don't know who wins the fight, but I'm expecting a KO. Right? These guys are going to come in. It's going to be a testosterone contest. They're going to throw a lot of punches. Somebody's going to get stopped. So, of course, the fight starts. And like Errol Spence against Mikey Garcia, Carl Frotch is on his back foot. Carl Frotch, the consummate hunter, the closer. Didn't he close out Lucien Butte? Another fight I got wrong. Right? Didn't he close out Jermaine Taylor? Wasn't Carl Frotch a guy who was supposed to be a slow starter? Who won a series of fights late by stoppage? Here's Carl Frotch early. And he's moving. He wants Arthur Abraham to find him. He's circling Arthur Abraham. Right? For those who don't understand the back foot, understand it's not just deciding to back up, right? It's literally figuring out how to throw punches backing up, how to get leverage. It's fooling the hunter into believing that the hunter has a clear path on you and then throwing, in Marquez's case, a great right hand. In Ray Robinson's case, a great left hook, right? It's in knowing your opponent's movement and understanding that their openings, their defensive lapses as the guy comes forward that you can exploit. You want to see a classic fight. You know, history needs to remember this fight more. Understand, James Tony destroys Evander Holyfield, a guy who came inside on Mike Tyson. You understood that Holyfield figured out during the fight before he gets stopped. He gets stopped so badly, we started hearing that Holyfield had a hole in his heart and nonsensical stories like that to explain a performance where he's repeatedly beaten to the punch and where Tony sets up shop at times right up against the ropes and dominates the action. Right? Even a guy who could fight inside like Holifield ran into a guy with a back foot game that literally ended with Holifield getting dropped. Right? Now, let me just say, Canelo has a back foot game. You saw it the first Golovkin fight. Now I know, I felt Canelo lost that fight. But here's what's clear. After Golovkin gets a lead in that fight, in my opinion, Canelo does win a bunch of later rounds. Right? Golovkin actually starts to run out of gas. Canelo on his back foot starts to make Golovkin miss and starts to counter him. Now Canelo has a back foot game. 
but it's not Billy Joe Saunders level. Understand, Canelo's a switch, right? He's the hunter. In some fights, he's the hunted. In other fights, Billy Joe Saunders is accustomed to being the hunted. His entire construct involves convincing people like David Lemieux, knockout puncher, to be aggressive. What I found with guys like Billy Joe Saunders is that the guy has a bit of a poker persona. But you're not going to find a better student of the game. He tells you before the fight that he's going to beat Chris Eubank. That he's going to dominate David Lemieux. Then the fight happens and it's clear that he knows Chris Eubank better than Chris Eubank's father. That he knows David Lemieux's fight style better than Lemieux's corner. Saunders is a southpaw. So understand, it's hard to deal with the mover as it is. But when the guy is a southpaw, that changes the angles. That makes it even harder. Now I know Danny Jacobs gets inside on Canelo. Switches to a southpaw stance. And Canelo wins those moments. Google Canelo's comments after fighting Danny Jacobs. Canelo talks about Jacobs going southpaw and how Canelo feels he does well against southpaws. Danny Jacobs, as a southpaw, doesn't have Billy Joe Saunders' fluidity. Let's be real, too. Danny Jacobs, that fight, was weight drained. He didn't even show up for the contractually mandated follow-up weigh-in before the fight. He forfeited a lot of money by not showing up for the follow-up weigh-in before the fight. If you saw Danny at the weigh-in for the fight at 160 pounds, and you just look at Danny's neck, Danny looked like he hadn't had a meal for days. Billy Joe Saunders, who also has fought at 160, gets to fight this fight at 168, where he has a share of the title. This is actually a super middleweight unification match. Understand, by the way, Danny Jacobs was so weight-drained for the Saul Alvarez fight that Danny himself is now fighting at 168. Right? I'm expecting Andre to move to 168. So let's talk about the new neighborhood Canelo's in at 168 pounds. Let's talk about some of his neighbors. I'm just telling you, I'm expecting Canelo to get a couple of losses as he makes his tour around this division. First, let's talk about David Benavides. Just some quick thoughts. He's a hunter. He's a huge puncher. He can be a short puncher. Is devastating, deep in the pocket. He's two-handed, right? He's there to KO you. He tries to corner opponents and then work them over. Next, there's Caleb Plant. Understand, I consider Plant to be the best in the division. Quite frankly, I consider Plant to be one of the best pound for pound in the sport. He has a hair trigger left hook. Now, Plant fought a guy, Mike Lee. I got huge odds on Mike Lee. I looked at Mike Lee's resume and I thought, you know what? Mike Lee should be able, light heavyweight guy, fighting at 168, should be able to come in from Chicago, should be able to come in and body up Caleb Plant, right? He didn't have to be artful. He had to turn the fight into a brawl. I thought he had a shot on Caleb Plant. I thought he was worth the risk at the price. 
I hedged a play with Plant by KO. Thank goodness I did. Caleb Plant was so fast that fight. He hits Mike Lee with one of the best left hooks I've seen in my life. And I've seen Floyd and I've seen Joe Fraser. Right? It's here trigger. He's one of the best movers in boxing. Not all movers are created equally. Right? Like Ali. Caleb Plant looks so good moving around the ring, making you miss. Right? He frames it so well for the crowd. In other words, he'll have his back up against the rope, some guys in front of him throwing headshots, and Plant will turn, make the guy miss, and make it look in such a way that he wants the crowd to understand he's making the guy miss. Plant doesn't have to throw punches to win rounds. Then you got Callum Smith. Now, full disclosure, Smith fought a guy named Ryder recently, and I thought he lost that fight. Right? But this is boxing. <laughs> the, judges, the judges had him winning the fight by several rounds. Maybe the feed on my TV was uh, hacked or something. I don't know. But the fight I saw, the smaller Ryder gets inside and starts to work over Callum Smith from inside. It looked like Smith, who's 6'3", had a problem with a small guy deep, deep, deep in the pocket. Right? But understand, Smith is a puncher. Like Canelo, he fought Rocky Fielding. Unlike the Canelo Fielding fight against Callum Smith, Fielding does not make it out of the first round. Smith moves better than Benavides. Right? He's two-handed. He's beaten George Groves. I thought that was an interesting fight. But like Benavides, I get the feeling that Smith ultimately belongs at 175. Right? I see guys who are too big for the division, and I wonder how long this is going to last, especially as the guys age and get closer to 30. Well, now we have Billy Joe Saunders. And what I want people to understand is Billy Joe Saunders is what I call a jazz man. Right? If you've listened to jazz, let's say Kind of Blue by Miles Davis, a jazz musician will, at least from the Davis era, hold notes a little bit too long, play games with tempo, tone, be a little bit offbeat. Now Canelo has a draw on his record. It's a fight I haven't seen. Right? I've tried to. But getting the film is elusive. It's Saul Alvarez against an offbeat fighter. Fighter who was much better than advertised. His nickname was the Puppet. Miguel Vasquez. Now, Vasquez was the kind of guy who looked like he was throwing punches, but wouldn't throw the punch at that moment. He'd throw the punch a second late. Other times, Vasquez would look like he's setting up to throw a punch. But Vasquez would throw the punch early. Right? That's the fight style. I know Vasquez's fight style. I haven't seen the Canelo fight, but I think it's noteworthy. That that fight ended in a draw. Then you have Mayweather. Here trigger left hook. Right there I say Caleb Plant level left hook. Right? That fight's interesting. Mayweather Canelo. Because in the first round, and I encourage people to look at the fight. You don't have to look at it that long. In the first round, Mayweather uncharacteristically... Steps right in front of Canelo. Is there for a prolonged period of time. Mayweather is prepared to trade. Now understand. When Mayweather fought guys. Who were a little bit slower than him. Champ Gennaro Hernandez for example. A then unbeaten Diego Corrales for example. Right. Mayweather. Knowing he had the hand speed advantage, knowing he had the reflex advantage, was willing to have a bit of a shootout. 
Don't get me wrong, he wouldn't abandon his defense, right? You still weren't going to land right hands to the body, right? Mayweather would have his defense. Mayweather's a defensive master. But Mayweather comes out against a then unbeaten Saul Alvarez. And he's right in front of Saul Alvarez. He's even doing high risk stuff. Mayweather's jabbing him to the body. Understand, that's high risk because you're bent over, you're in the pocket, hitting the guy in the body. A counter puncher lives for moments like that. That's their shot to take a, you know, uh, a chance hitting you in the head and stuff. Mayweather's doing high risk stuff right in front of Canelo. And at that time in Canelo's career, Canelo did not trust his reflexes. He doesn't want to open up because he knew Mayweather had a hair trigger left hook. Right? He knew Mayweather, very accurate puncher, very fast puncher. Right? So interestingly enough, that fight starts with Saul Alvarez not throwing a lot of punches. Mayweather sweeps the early rounds in that fight, but that first round's interesting because the first round, Mayweather's right in front of Saul Alvarez. Saul Alvarez doesn't open up. Let's talk about another fight Saul Alvarez had with a guy who, to me, could vary speeds, complicated fighter, good defensive fighter, mover, Arislandi Lara. Now, I know... I've spoken, or at least emailed, uh, chatted here online with um, people who follow my channel, and many of you disagree with me. I thought Laura won that fight. But more importantly, whether or not I thought Laura won that fight, that fight has a pattern that repeats itself. Laura lands a couple of shots on Canelo and then moves away. Right? Lara seems faster than Saul Alvarez. Lara's able to land punches on Saul Alvarez. As Lara moves away, Alvarez cannot follow him. Right? Lara, to me, is dictating the pace of that fight. Now, I'll agree. Lara moves away a bit too much in that fight. This is the same argument people make against Tyson Fury in the first fight against Deontay Wilder. The idea is that Lara's not throwing enough punches. He's not mixing it up enough. It's too much of a hit, hit, I'm out the pocket. But the key is that Canelo couldn't stop the hit, hit. Right? Lara was faster than Canelo. Now, I've noticed, especially in the first Golovkin fight, right? Canelo has improved his hand speed, no question about it. Canelo has a hair trigger, left hook. You saw that in the Kovalev fight, right? But understand, that's when Canelo is leading. Right? I don't believe Canelo has that. I believe a mover like a Lara, like a Vasquez, like a Billy Joe Saunders can take away Canelo's hand speed by moving. So I'm disturbed when I see Kovalev. And keep in mind, Kovalev, like Anthony Joshua, it's the same dynamic Joshua in the Andy Ruiz rematch. Kovalev on his back foot dancing around the ring for the Canelo fight, that was new. That was a Kovalev Buddy McGirt creation. That wasn't the Kovalev we know. Kovalev's not dancing against Andre Ward in either fight. Right? Kovalev's not there dancing against John Pascal when they fought. Right? Kovalev's not dancing against Nathan Cleverly. Kovalev, like Joshua, learns to dance or dusts off his dancing skills 
for the Canelo fight, the back foot that Kovalev's showing, where he's constantly moving and he's throwing a jab, he's not even doing that in the Alvarez fights, the Elder Alvarez fights. But yet, while he's dancing in front of Canelo, He's surviving, isn't he? Canelo's not able to cut off the ring. Force him to exchange. Right? Canelo at times, dare I say, looked like Andy Ruiz did in the rematch against Joshua. Right? He's following Kovalev around the ring. Now, the big question in the Kovalev fight was, gee, can Kovalev do this for 12 rounds? Understand, Billy Joe Saunders lives on his back foot and has already done it for 12 rounds several times in his career. There's even a round in the Kovalev fight, and it's disturbing. Don't get me wrong, big accomplishment by Canelo certainly part of his Hall of Fame resume, to win the light heavyweight title. Right? That's a huge accomplishment. I don't mean to minimize it. But understand, there's even a round in the Kovalev fight where Canelo decides he's going to hang out by the ropes and he takes the round off. In other words, following Kovalev around the ring, and Kovalev's older than Billy Joe Saunders. Kovalev's in his mid-30s. Following Kovalev around the ring, and Kovalev is, you know, showing us the back foot game for the first time in his career, right? At that level, where he's dancing and stuff, just like Anthony Joshua. I know it's an amateur, Joshua got on his back foot, but let's face it, he's not out there dancing and moving like he did against Andy Ruiz in any other fight of his professional career. In other words, these guys are newbies at moving around the ring. They're not going to be confused with an Ali or a Tyson Fury moving around the ring. And still, Kovalev makes it to the later rounds. I believe the situation is going to be more urgent. More urgent. Against Billy Joe Saunders. Saunders is much more fluid on his back foot. He's much more judge friendly on his back foot than Kovalev. Right? Understand, Saunders lives to defuse guys like David Lemieux. I believe Sa um, Saunders is going to have the faster foot speed. I believe his movement is going to take away Canelo's hand speed. The big punch in the Kovalev fight was Canelo's left hook, right? Understand a back foot guy like Saunders has above average defense. Kovalev was a slugger who wasn't there to outbox you, right? Saunders, by contrast, is a practitioner of the back foot. He knows about Canelo's leaping left hook. Canelo doesn't have a lot of ring coverage otherwise. So here's where the fight gets dicey. You know, I'll just say this. Uh, I've seen great fighters and I mean this, great fighters lose fights, right? I remember I was watching my TV and I saw Carl the Truth Williams beat Larry Holmes. I was watching my TV in the 70s with my father and I saw Jimmy Young beat Ali. Right? Um, with regard to Canelo, Canelo's a great fighter. He's clearly a Hall of Famer. 
it boggles the imagination to realize that Canelo is even in the 168 pound weight class right now. After all the success he's had at 154, 160, right? It's even more amazing to realize he's already won a title at 175. This is a trailblazer. This is the kind of fighter the Hall of Fame is made for. But I've seen Canelo fights where he's lost. I know many of you disagree with me. I thought he lost the Austin Trout fight. I thought that fight was marred by open scoring. I thought the scoring was ridiculous. Right? I don't know who the judge was who thought Canelo got a draw with Floyd Mayweather. That's outrageous. Right? The Laura fight, I still believe that Canelo lost that fight. Let's name an even dicier fight. This is one that Floyd thought Canelo won. I've looked at the fight again. I'm with Freddie Roach and I'm with Miguel Cotto. I thought Cotto beat Canelo. That fight's interesting because Cotto's moving around the ring. He takes away Canelo's hand speed. Canelo does hit him with great body shots. He does. Just not enough for the scorecards to reflect what happened in the ring. So Canelo's had problems against guys who use movement against him. I think Canelo is an excellent boxer. I thought his head movement against Danny uh, Jacobs was masterful. Masterful. Right? Canelo's a guy who can fight on his back foot. Canelo can fight on his front foot. Canelo improves over time. His hand speed's faster than it used to be. Right? He has the kind of power that carried the day at 175, right? Kovalev's been hit with shots in the past, right? The way Canelo stops him is noteworthy, right? There's a lot about Canelo that I love. I just don't think his style matches up with Billy Joe Saunders. I think as Canelo comes forward, He's going to find out that he's where Saunders wants him to be. This fight's going to have a Manny Pacquiao, Juan Manuel Marquez dynamic to it. Right? I believe it's going to have a Arthur Abraham, Carl Frotch dynamic to it. Sometimes the hunted wants to be hunted. Put differently, this would be like Tyson Fury coming after Deontay Wilder with Wilder's back up against the ropes and Wilder walking him into left hooks. Right? Wilder walking him into short, straight right hands. Right? Wilder landing power shots on him. Think about Ali Liston. Right? If you don't believe in the Phantom Punch, that's the rematch, go to the first fight. Right? Ali is in against Liston, who's trying to find him. Big puncher, great jab. Liston can't even land his jab on Ali. Right? This is the dynamic Ali wants. You want to know a better Ali fight than Ali Liston? Jimmy Young. Ali's on his back foot. Jimmy Young refuses to follow him. Young just stands there in the middle of the ring. This is what the George Foreman rematch would have looked like after the rumble in the jungle. So Ali, so desperate, Ali literally, during the fight, calls Jimmy Young over to fight with him. And Young refuses because Young, out of Philly, understood he didn't want to play Ali's game. He didn't want the role of the hunter. Right? Judges robbed Jimmy Young that night. I thought that was just mentally one of the best fights I've ever seen. So here. Here's where the controversy happens. Right? When you're a guy like Canelo. 
the total ambassador for the sport, right? Good looking guy, very popular, takes big challenges. Just the fact that we're naming guys like Austin Trout, Miguel Cotto, Danny Jacobs, Golovkin, Kovalev, right? For the same guy. In other words, you know, he, he fought James Kirkland, who seems to be on every TV these days. Right, Canelo has taken the challenges. He's the ultimate ambassador for the sport. You know the way a Canelo interview goes at the end of the sport uh, fight. He could knock out the guy early. You know Canelo's going to be humble. You know he's going to thank his opponent for accepting the challenge. You know he's going to give a shout out to his corner. You know he's going to give a shout out to the crowd. You know he's going to give a shout out to the Mexican people. Even though Canelo is fluent in English, probably speaks English better than I do. You know he's going to answer questions in Spanish because he wants his Spanish speaking fans to hear from him directly. Right? This is a guy you can sell tickets with. This is a box office master. This is his moment in boxing. What I found is it's fights like this where you know Saunders is going to try to outbox Canelo, not knock him out, but outbox him. Right? It's fights like this against opponents like Saunders, who reminds me a bit of Jimmy Young. Right? Jimmy Young, not the best interview. Right? You're interviewing a guy and the guy's looking over your shoulder. His eyes look a little bit vacant. Maybe he shows up for the interview with a hoodie like Mark Zuckerberg does or with a nose ring like Jack Dorsey does. And you're wondering, gee, am I talking to a guy who's taking this seriously? Meanwhile, like Zuckerberg, like Jack Dorsey, you're talking to a master, a champion, a big time thinker. Billy Joe Saunders just doesn't have the body language to bring in fans the way Canelo does. I saw Billy Joe Saunders for the first six rounds of the Eubank fight, fight a masterpiece. Then I saw Billy Joe Saunders for the last six rounds of that Eubank fight. Saunders, in the biggest fight of his career up until that point, looked uninspired. Looked like he had things to do after the fight. Right? Even though he clearly had a deeper knowledge of boxing than Eubank at that time. He gives away several rounds late. Just gives them away. You know, you look at Saunders at times and you wonder, gee, is this guy even in shape? And keep in mind, this is a mover. But yet he's 29-0. and 0. I think the scoring of this fight is going to be controversial. Right? I think Canelo is a Joe Lewis character. Right? People want to vote for him. By the way, Lewis got so badly beaten by Jersey Joe Walcott that he's out of the ring on his way back to the locker room when they announced that he had won the fight. Right? This is in a sport where the ref is supposed to raise your hand in the ring. Say the winner is blah, blah, blah. Joe Lewis was so convinced he had lost, he left the ring. The ref had to go hop out the ring to raise his hand. We want Canelo to win. Canelo seems to win all of the close fights unless, unless it's against a Floyd Mayweather. Right? So I'm expecting controversy. That's why the bet I'm recommending is the plus 350. I think Saunders has a real chance at winning the fight. Hedged with the over. I don't see Canelo at 168 KOing or catching up to Billy Joe Saunders for at least the first half of the fight. I'm going to set up the play so that the minute the ninth round starts, I win my bet. Right? I like the over. I'm going to buy rounds down to round nine if the over-under is above that. I like Billy Joe Saunders to win at plus 350, hedged with the over. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.